Hello everyone, this is Pastor Sean from Christians Unite, and this is a video series called Topics. On today's episode of Topics, we are going to be discussing the power of prayer and how to use it. As always, we are going to be looking at select Bible verses that talk about this topic, and we'll dive deep into what the, the text is actually saying so that you get a better, better understanding of prayer. First, I'm going to read from 1 John 5, 13 through 15. Um, it says, I write these things to you who believe in the name of the Son of God so that you may know that you have eternal life. This is the confidence we have in approaching God that if we ask anything in accordance to his will, he hears us. So, we need to be praying to God and we can ask him for things that we want or desire. However, it has to be within his will. If it's something for selfish purpose, where it's all about yourself, um, that that prayer may not be answered if it's not God's will. So this is something that's really important to know. And now I'm going to read Second Chronicles seven fourteen. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Then I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sin and will hear, heal, heal their land. So what to take from this verse is that if you are living in sin and you're a Christian and you continuously are living sin over and over and over again and you're not repenting and changing your ways it's most likely that god will not hear those prayers because you are in a cycle of sin that separates your relationship from god until you repent and turn from that sin it may be that god may not hear your prayer the next verse is Ephesians 6, verse 18. And pray in the Spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for all of Lord of the Lord's people. So what this means is we should be praying on all occasions. So if we're having breakfast, lunch, or dinner, we should be praying for that. If we're having some kind of celebration with family, we should be praying before that or during that. There's no occasion that doesn't need prayer. So we should be doing this. We also need to be praying for other brothers and sisters in Christ as well, because we're all part of the same body. So we should be praying for each other because Christ cares about all of us, and so should we. The next verse that we'll be reading is James 5, verse 13. Is anyone among you in trouble? Let them pray. Is anyone happy? Let them sing songs of praise. We'll also read 14. Is anyone sick? Let them call the elders of the church to pray over them and anoint them with oil in the name of the Lord. So this is really important for these verses because we should be praying in the good times, but also be praying for the bad times. So when we're struggling, we're sad, nothing's working in our favor, we should bend our knee and pray. Now this is when normal, you know, what normally people do, um, they only pray to God when things are going wrong. But you know what? When things are going right and great, don't just forget about God. Thank him for what you have and what is happening in your life that is so good. Because if we're just saying, oh God, we need you during these hard times, and then you forget about him when everything's okay, are we treating God as a genie? Because he's not. He is the everlasting father who loves us. So we need to be showing him the same love that he shows us 
and care about him at all times, no matter what the circumstance is. The next verse is Matthew 6, verse 7. We'll read that one first. And then I do have Matthew 6, 9 through 13 as a template for prayer. Um, so I'll read verse 7 first so we get an idea of what we're talking about here. And when you pray, do not keep on babbling like pagans, for they think they will be heard because of their many words. So when we pray, it doesn't have to be some long, elaborate, thought-out process where all the words fit together and it seems so nice and so poetic or perfectly aligned to make people impressed by us. We should be praying to God like you're talking to a brother or sister, uh, mother or father. Um, just speak what's on your mind to God because he's willing to hear you. And also when you are called upon or asked to pray in public, don't worry about what you say because a lot of times people say, no, I can't pray in public because I don't have the words. Just speak what's on your mind and what you think needs to be said. It doesn't have to be some kind of fancy um, speech. Because a lot of times pe the people that are praying that way, um, th they're either trying to impress somebody or they think that's what they have to do. And they really don't. Now, don't get me wrong. It's not wrong to do it. But it kind of puts people in a place where they're like, well, I can follow up with that. And they think that they might have to. But you really don't. God wants to hear what you have to say coming from your mind and your heart. Uh, Matthew 6, 9 through, 6, 9 through 13. We'll read that next. Um, this is important because this is actually a prayer that Jesus uh, taught people to, to pray. Um, it's kind of, the, kind of a template for prayer, giving you an idea of what to pray for. This, then, is how you should pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we have forgiven, for, forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. So it's basically praying for your basic needs and your spiritual help health that's super important that you remember to pray for what you need and pray from pray for strength from from god to protect you from the devil and his schemes the final verse comes from james chapter 4 verse 3 when you ask you do not receive because you ask with the wrong motives that you may spend what you get on pleasures so, again, when we pray, we have to humble ourselves and know who we're talking to. We're talking to the Most High God, the authority above all. So, He knows our motive. So, if you're praying and you're praying for selfish things, like if you say, I want that Ferrari in my front, front yard, I want the picket fence, the... The fancy things in life and I, I God give me a million dollars that is selfish we should be praying for things that we need and things for other people who are struggling and for the church things that are focused on the kingdom of God if we pray for selfish things God will not listen if we're coming from that point of view. So always humble yourself and know who you're talking with. I hope you enjoyed this edition of Topics. If you have any questions about prayer or any questions about anything um, related to the Bible or how to, how to have a deeper relationship with Jesus, reach out to me, feel free to message me. I'm open uh, to help every single one of you. God bless, I love you, have a wonderful week.